Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to all of you. Good morning. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in this day. Good morning to all of you. Come on in the room. This is the day the Lord has made. Come on in this room. Let us rejoice. Let us give the Lord our first and our best praise. Let us magnify him this morning, this Monday morning, for he is great. The day after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, let's magnify the Lord. Let us give him what it is that he deserves and desires on this morning. Our first and our best praise. Let us magnify him. Good morning to you, Cousin Jean. Sister Donna, good morning to you. God bless you all this morning. I'm telling you, I'm excited about the Lord this morning. I'm excited about what it is that he is going to do. Yes in the next few minutes of time. Good morning to you, Sister Cynthia. Good morning to all of you that are coming in the room. Come on in the room. It is a great day to be a part of the kingdom of God, a great day to be alive. Yeah, a great day, yes, to know that the Lord is unstoppable. There is nothing that is too hard for him. There is good morning to all of you coming in the room. I'm telling you, the Lord has something great and special in store for each and every one of us on this morning. I'm going to go before the Lord in prayer this morning. I hope that all of you are having a great, great morning already. And you already know that the Lord loves you. That You already know that the Lord is blessing you and keeping you each and every day. Every step that you take, the Lord continues to take that step with you. Yeah, let me go before the Lord in prayer. Father God, I just thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for your power, Lord God. I thank you for your goodness. And Lord God, I thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord God, that follows us every day of our lives. Lord, great is your faithfulness toward us, oh God. And, and Lord, I'm telling you that we don't take anything for granted this morning. Not our waking up, oh God. Not our, God, even lying down last night to have a good, sweet rest. But Lord God, as we even wake up this morning, and Lord, as we have our minds stayed on you, Lord, we thank you for strength, Lord God. We thank you for power. We thank you, Lord God, for even allowing us to know who we are this morning. Not just just who we are, but whose we are. We thank you, Lord God, for keeping us, go, Lord God, in perfect peace. God, as our mind has been stayed on you. Thank you, Lord God, for letting us to recognize, God, that even though things may not, God, be as well as we want them to be, we thank you, Lord God, that things will work out for our good, God, according to the word of God, because we love you, Lord God, and we've been called according to your purpose, oh God. Lord, we thank you, my God, that our family as well as they are, Lord God, and, and Lord God, even though sickness tried to overtake us, Lord God, it did not take us down. For Lord God, you are a healer, God, above all healers, and we thank you, Lord God, that nothing is too hard for you. So, Lord God, even in this word, we pray, oh, Lord God, that I will in decrease in myself and increase in you, the Lord Jesus Christ, who, Lord, surely does give me the ability to do all things well. Not just me, God, anybody who calls on you, Lord God, anybody who will open their mouth, Lord God, and believe and trust, God, that you can do what it is that you say that you can do. And, Lord, that is all of us, God, that call upon your name, Lord God. We come seeking you, Lord God, wanting to get closer and closer to you, Lord God. Lord, we want a relationship with you, Lord God, that we recognize that, as the Bible says, Lord God, that when we believe, God, and when we call and we ask you for something, Lord God, that is according to your will, that you will hear us. And when you hear us, we have the petitions, God, that we have set before you. So we thank you, Lord God, for hearing our prayer in regard to our health, for hearing our prayer, Lord God, in regard to our finances, for hearing our prayer, Lord God, in regard to our mental stability. For hearing our prayer, oh God, in regard to relationships, God. For hearing our prayer in regard to promotions and elevations, oh God. For hearing our prayer, Lord God, in regard to uh, having a hedge protection around us and our families. For hearing our prayer, Lord God, in regard to provision, oh God. For hearing our prayer, Lord God, in regard to staying the hand of the enemy, oh God. Our, the enemy is trying to, to get us off focus, oh God. But I thank you, Lord God, that you continue to, continue to keep us, oh God, and continue to comfort us us, oh God, through difficult times, Lord God, we thank you so much for how, Lord God, you continue to, oh God, water, God, the ground that has been planted, oh God, that we will grow up, oh God, to be great disciples for you in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Now, Lord, allow this word, God, to penetrate our spirits, that we will never, ever forget it. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen, and bless the Lord, amen. Good morning to all of you that have joined while I was yet in prayer. Good morning, good morning. I'm telling you, I feel Jesus already. I just bless the Lord this morning for all of you that are joining this morning meditation. The Lord is good. As a matter of fact, he's great. He's better than good. Uh, I think Donnie McClurkin, I don't know who it is that sings that song. Um, 
Now, if you say he's good, he's been better than that. And if you say he's great, he's been better than that. I just want to bless God this morning for allowing me an opportunity to come and share a word, just to speak a word. And um, I, I just believe that the Lord just is just want to speak to somebody this morning. And it's been in my spirit all day and all night. Um, and what's been in my spirit is the Lord is on your side. Um, ah, God, my, 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 I had an opportunity to spend some time with a, a great number of my brothers and sisters uh, yesterday celebrating Resurrection Sunday with my mom. And there were, I think, eight of us here in the area. And we were talking about old times. We were talking about discipline and how discipline has changed so much from when we were growing up and, you know, how the, the neighbors could discipline and how, um, you know, um, discipline would happen in the house. And we talked about, yeah, we talked about, uh, my brother was saying that I was a scrapper. I didn't remember being a fighter, but he was talking about I was a fighter on the playground and I would, I would fight with boys. And, and I told him, I said, well, you know, I may, I may pick the fight, but I would call my brothers. And I would say, you know, my brothers was on my side. I thought about that thing. I said, you know what? No matter what's going on, no matter what comes. Hey, Sister Cynthia, Sister Nimby, so good to see you this morning. Good to see all of you this morning. Cousin Jean, you know, I would say no matter what was going on, you always have to have somebody on your side, somebody that would fight for you. Even if you would pick the fight, somebody that would fight your battle that you know that you was not going to lose. Somebody that would be there for you, that you could have that assurance that everything was going to work out for your good on your behalf and that's how God is and I'm just beginning to think about that thing and I said you know what and my brother said he said you didn't lose no fight and I said you know what I didn't think I was a fighter but maybe I, the reason I didn't think I was a fighter because I didn't lose no fight but I thought about that thing with God you know with God people of God we don't lose no fight we got to know that when we go in it with God we can't go by ourselves but when we go with God, we never lose. And I begin to think about that thing. You know what? God is always on our side. And no matter how much the enemy will pick with us and bully on us, God is always on our side, Cousin Trina. He is always right there with us. And I want to talk a little bit about that this morning. When God is on your side, you got somebody. There's a scripture in the word of God found in Psalms. 124. And I'm going to read the whole song because the word of the Lord says this, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us alive. Oh my God. I began to get happy about it as I was getting ready to prepare for this message. If God had not been on my side, when men came against us, now I'm just talking now, when, when men came against us, we would have been swallowed up alive. And if God had not been on our side, you know, sometimes we think we're out there all by ourselves and we think we're out here alone. But people of God, when, when you have an intimate relationship with him, and I'm talking about when you're getting closer to him, I'm not talking about this lukewarm thing. One day we're in and one day we're out. Sometimes we do that. But I'm talking about when you have a real relationship with him. Oh, yeah. The, the Bible said, let me get back to it. It says, it says when men rose up against us, it says, then they would have swallowed us alive. It says, when their wrath was kindled against us, people of God. It says, then the waters would have overwhelmed us. Oh my God. If God was not on our side, the waters would have overtaken us. It says, the Bible says, the stream would have gone over our soul. And, and then the swollen waters would have gone over our soul. Listen, people of God. Have you ever felt like, my God, you were going to drown, but, but you just thought about, you know what? I've got God on my side and all I got to do is call on his precious name. And if you can just think enough to call on the name of Jesus, oh, don't you know he's going to bring you out and, and don't you know, my God, he's going to have your head held above the water. Let me just keep on reading. The Bible says on number six, it says, blessed be the Lord. Oh yeah. Who has not given us as prey to their teeth. Listen, the Lord will never give up on you. He will never put you over to the enemy. 
The Bible says our soul has escaped as a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. And the Bible says in verse number eight of that same Psalm, our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. When you know you got some help, yeah, when I was younger, I would call on my brother. I would call on Zach or I would call on Lee. But listen, when you know you've got God and when you know you've got the Lord on your side, my God, the Bible says that your help is in the name of the Lord. When you call on God, who is your strong tower? Listen, David here, Sister Samora, is, is talking about, he's, this, he's giving this testimony. And what he's giving this testimony about is a person, he himself, who is walking with the Lord. Oh, yeah. He's saying, because I walk with the Lord, I've got this special relationship with him. Because I walk with him, my God, this is a testimony of what happens when somebody is truly walking with the Lord. When it truly, this is what it truly means to have the Lord on your side. And you, can, He's talking about, yeah, I see you, Sister Nora. Good to see you this morning. He's saying here that in, in for Israel, this, this when, when good things happen, when powerful things happen, when when precious things happen, when when promises are revealed, when things are manifested to you, it can only be explained by the fact that the Lord is on your side. Now, some people say, you know what they say? Well, you know, the enemy gives blessings too. No, 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 no. The enemy will allow some things that happened in your life that make you think that things are going your way. But you know, it's just a mirage. Yeah, because the Bible says that the blessings. Oh, yeah. Well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they 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 bring they bring good things to you. They don't bring no sorrow to you, my God. Because what the enemy will do in the end, the Bible says, when you sow to the flesh, you will reap destruction or corruption. But when the Lord brings good things to you, there is no destruction. There is no corruption. In that my God is only brings good things. My God, yes. And so we have to think about here as David here is giving this wonderful testimony of what it means to be walking with the Lord. Yeah, if anybody. You will say sometimes, people, how you doing and how you feeling. And sometimes they will say, I'm blessed. And, and my God, and you say, well, oh, what's going on that you're really blessed? David is saying, these are some things that happen because I'm walking with the Lord. And so instead of David saying, I'm blessed, what David is saying here, because I have a relationship with God, when men might come against me, the Lord takes care of the situation. When my enemies try to press me down, the Lord will lift me up. My God, David is saying these are some specific things that are happening, benefits, some byproducts of me walking with the Lord. Can you think about some byproducts of you just walking with the Lord? My God. And so here we're talking about this Psalm 124. And I want you all to remember this because it's saying, look, if it's the Lord that's on my side, it's him. If he wasn't by my side, I don't know where I would be, but because he he is by my side because the Lord is on my side. He's doing some things. He's rescued me. He's picked me up. He's held me up. Oh my God. Listen, listen, God is because he is who he is. God has made a way for us out of no way. God is working. He's intervening every day on behalf of his people. Why do I say every day? Because every day the enemy, the Bible says, is looking, he's lurking, seeking whom he may devour. And that's why I know every day the Lord is working on my behalf. Every day he's working on your behalf. And so when you are under attack, when it seems like things are overwhelming for you, the Bible says in Psalms, all you got to do is celebrate God, call on his name, celebrate the one who makes a difference in your life. Oh, yeah, I know you thought it was your spouse or your mama or your daddy, but you need to celebrate the one who makes a difference in your life. Celebrate the one, my God, who is, oh, yeah, he's the majority. But the Bible says, yeah, he is more than the world against you. So he, you and God, you're the majority. You think it's 
too, but no, no, no. He is more than the world against you. When you think that everything is caving in all around you, when you think, Gideon, that you might be the weakest one, you, you think you got the weakest army, you think you got the people that don't know the most, you think you got the smallest church, you think you got the littlest choir, you think you got, oh my God, you think you don't have the most education, and my God, you think you don't have enough money, glory to God, and all you got to do is call on God, if you're walking with him, if you're, oh my God, God is on your side, and because the weakest, the one you feel like you're the weakest, the Lord says, I am there in your weakness, he said, I am your strength, my God, and the weakest Christians, my God, who have God on their side, they are the ones who will prevail, oh my God, they are, I get, I'm excited about this, because I recognize that when it seems like I'm going to fall and when it seems like I'm going to fail, people of God, God says, I'm there to lift you up. Glory to God. It seems like, though, my God, when you when you are the ones you acting like you're feeling like you're the strongest and you feel like you're the one that you can hold yourself up and you can keep yourself up. My God, it, it seems like, my God, you got it all up top and you got it all held together. My God, it, it seems like you could do it without God. Those are the ones, my God, who are doomed to failure. But my God, the one who says, and what got in humility, that Lord, I need you. Oh my God, if you can say, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every day, Lord God, I need thee. My God, when you can say that, you can know, my God, that the Lord will come to your rescue and he will come and see about you. My God, he will come and see about you. When I look, my God, God in Exodus, my God, chapter 32, when Moses stood at the gate of the camp and, and Moses said, who is on the Lord's side? He said, whoever, y'all know the story. Moses said, whoever's on the Lord's side, y'all come over here. And all the sons of Levi, they came around there. Glory to God. Listen, if you're not on the Lord's side, you know what happened to the other ones. They fell down. But you know, you got to be on the Lord's side where the Lord can hold you up, where he can pick you up. Oh yeah, I see you, Sister Phyllis. Lord, we need you every day and we need you every hour. My God, we need you. God, Listen, we need the Lord. He doesn't need us, Sister Sherilyn, but we need him. We are desperate for him. We're desperate for his power. Whose side are you on today? Are you on the Lord's side? I, I know things may not look so good today. But are you on the Lord's side or are you on the enemy's side? Whose camp are you in today? My God, are you on the, are you on the Lord's side or where you have repented of your sins and, and you believe that the Lord, my God, is, has forgiven you? Are you on, on the Lord's side where you say, the Lord, I trust you. I trust you with my life. God, I trust you, my God, with everything that is within me. God, I'm, I'm on your Lord's. I'm on your side, God. Are you on the Lord's side to allow him to change you from the inside out? God, you can say, Lord, I trust you enough to relinquish what I want to do, God. And, and I, I, I thank you, Jesus, where the Lord said, even when he died on the cross, my God, Jesus going to the cross, he said, Father, can this cup pass from me? Ah, and then in the next instant, he said, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. He relinquished what he wanted to do. He relinquished, oh my God, what his flesh wanted to do. And he said, Lord, ah, I give it up. I give it over to you. Lord, that you could do with me what you want to do with me, Lord God. Oh yeah, whose side are you on? Listen, God is on your side because if the Lord is on your side, then you can walk in total confidence knowing that the Lord is going to take care of you every day, every hour, every minute, every second. You can live and walk in total assurance, my God, that nothing that the enemy does is going to overthrow you, my God, because you recognize that what the Bible says is true, that there is no weapon that is formed against you that is going to prosper. 
my God. And, and when you recognize that the Lord is on your side, you recognize that he makes the difference. My God, yeah, not your man, not your woman, my God, but he, the Lord, he makes the difference in your life. Yeah, and I wrote down the scripture is found in Romans 8, my God, in 31, the Bible says, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, then who? can be against us. Sometimes we are so concerned, people of God, about what people say. We're so concerned about what they think. We're so concerned about what we think they're going to do if we do this and thus and so. But my God, the most important thing that we got to be concerned about is determining if we're on the Lord's side and, and whether the Lord is on our side or not. And how do we determine if the Lord, my God, is on our side? Oh, glory to God. We, we got to trust him with all of our heart. The Bible says, commit our ways unto him and he shall bring things to pass. Who, my God, yes, who is on the Lord's side this morning? But we got to remember, not only are we on his side, but he is on our side. He is on our side because we've got to remember when we weren't on the Lord's side and when the Lord was not on our side, what was going on in our life? There were situations that were happening. Maybe our, maybe our marriage was going out of whack and maybe our faith walk was not where it is today. Maybe there were some relationships that were all messed up and all out of whack, all crazy. But I'm telling you, maybe our finances were not the way they should have been. Maybe some stuff happened and it was just should not have happened. But then when you got on the Lord's side and the Lord got on your side, he began to turn some things around in your life. Oh, yeah. I see you, Fred Hammond. He, he turned in the midnight hour, late in the midnight hour. God began to turn some things around in your life. And you begin to recognize that it was nobody but God. Nobody but the Lord that could turn the situation around in your life like he did and like he could. People of God, in this Psalm 124, Here's David here is saying, give the Lord the credit for what it is that he did in your life. Because what is he saying? If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side. Oh, my God. If it had not been. He said, when when people rose up against us, I don't I don't care what happened, no matter how strong they were, no matter how much they talked about you, no matter what they said in the community. He said, the, the, he said they, were, they were strong. They were trying to defeat me. They were trying to scandalize my name. Oh, yeah, they were trying to drag me through the mud. They were trying to pull old stuff back from the past. But my God, somebody said, but God, all glory to God, the Lord stepped in. He stepped in right on time. Glory to God, because the enemy was trying to intimidate you. Glory to God. But listen, he said, but the Lord was on my side and, and the Lord made a difference. Glory to God. He made a difference that the enemy didn't swallow us up. He made a difference. And when it seemed like it was going to be a disaster in my life, oh, the Lord came through and he delivered me. Not only did he deliver me, but he delivered those that were trying to destroy me. Oh, have you ever seen it happen? Have you ever seen it happen, people of God, when somebody was trying to destroy you? Oh, my God. I'm going to say that. And you begin to call on the Lord and you saw right before your very eyes where the Lord began to deliver them. They may have been trying to destroy you. Maybe trying to discredit you. But then they love my God. You saw right before your eyes. Where the Lord began to change their heart. And change their mind. And as a matter of fact. They begin to be delivered. From that cantankerous spirit that they had. Oh my my God. The, the, the psalmist is saying. Let Israel say. If it had not been for the Lord. When people rose up against me, when they, when they began to attack me, when I felt weak, when I felt vulnerable, glory to God, when I felt cornered, my God, when I felt out of control, when I felt defeated, God stepped in. God stepped in. I don't know if that's anybody else's testimony this morning other than David's and mine, but he said, what can people do to me? When I look at Psalm 118, that's a benefit of the Lord being on your side. 
The benefit is the Bible says the Lord is on my side. And I will not fear. That's a benefit, Sister Gloria, when the Lord is on your side. Then you don't have to fear. I do not have to fear when the Lord is on my side. The Bible says, I will not fear. Oh, that's verse number six. What can man do to me? Oh, we're so worried about people. We're so worried about they. We, we get mad in church. We get mad at home. We get mad in the grocery store. We're mad on the road. We're mad, my God, at school. We're mad on our job. My God, we've got to battle every day. What did she say? All my life I had to fight. But my God, we've got the Lord who is on our side. And he said that he will fight our battles if we just... Keep still. If we cry out to the Lord. Instead of crying out to everybody else. If we cry out to the Lord. Allow him to intervene in the situation. If we cry out to the Lord who is on our side. And watch him take. Oh my God. Watch him take care of the situation. The Bible lets us know in Ephesians chapter 6. That we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We are so quick. To try to get back at somebody. We're so quick to snap back and clap back. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, people of God. But the Bible says against rulers and authorities and high principalities and rulers of darkness of this present age and spiritual wickedness in high places. Enemies who rise up against us. That's what, we reckon, that's what we wrestle against. But when the Lord steps in, that's why we're not defeated. It's because the Lord steps in. We are here. We are still standing, people of God. Somebody would say, if I was in church, I would tell somebody to say, I'm still standing. I'm still standing because the Lord stepped in. He was right there. He didn't have to run to my rescue. The Lord was on my side. He took up for me. He takes up for you. He took up for your children. When he went to the cross. He took up for you then. Glory to God. David said the Lord wasn't on my side. I, I would have been swallowed up alive. But thank God. Thank God. I wasn't swallowed up alive. God kept us. He's a keeper. We are still standing. Because without God, we can do nothing. But with God, the Bible lets us know that all things are possible. All things are possible. We talk about the water and the flood and, and verse number Four of that same passage of scripture, it says, then the flood would have swept us away. The torrent would have gone over us. Then over us would have gone the raging waters. Oh my God. Waters, flood. But the Lord was with us. Even things that happened unexpectedly. Don't you know that the Lord is not caught off guard by anything? We may be. Even the things that we don't expect. Even the things that catch us off guard, the Lord still takes care of those things because he's never caught off guard. And the reason that he still takes care of those things, because he knows the plan ahead of us. He knows what's going on ahead of us. And David goes on to say, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord who has not given us to pray as pray to their teeth. Bless the Lord. So when you know that the Lord has brought you through, when you know that the Lord has brought you out, David says, I need to bless him. I need to thank him. I need to give him praise for the things that he has done in my life. And sometimes we just count it as nothing when the Lord brings us through. But if the Lord has done so, the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If the Lord has done something for you, don't be ashamed of it. If the Lord has done something, if the Lord has spared your life, you got to give him some praise. 
If the Lord has, you, when we when we get cars and homes and money, oh yeah, we all up on Facebook. But when the Lord spares your life, when the Lord, my God, when he moves you out of the hands of the enemy, when he moves you out of harm's way, we ought to shout glory. When God saves us from an accident that we know should have been ours. My God, when the gun doesn't go off in our face, my God, we got to thank God for things that don't happen. Thank God. Let God be praised for the things that he kept us from. We could have been dead. We could have been on the street. We could have been naked. We could have been hungry. Thank God that he was able to pick us up and keep us from those situations. Thank God. The Bible says in Jude 24, now unto him who is able, by that by, he's able to keep us from stumbling and to present us blameless or faultless before the presence of his glory with great joy. We give God thanks because he's able to keep us from falling. And when we stumble, he will pick us up. He saved us. He's healed us. Oh, my God, my God. God is on your side, people of God. He's on your side. And because he's on your side, he promises you victory. He promises you victory. Praise God for what he has saved you from. Bless him. Remember him. Bless him. Trust him. And as you go out throughout this week, look back at what the Lord has already done for you. Look back on how he saved you. Look back on how he healed you. Look back on what the Lord has brought you through. Look back when you say, you know, there was no weapon that was formed against me that's going to prosper. Look at how you know that Satan wants to defeat you on every hand, but God said no. My God. And look at how you've already defeated Satan just by the words coming out of your mouth. My God, the Bible says, yeah, Psalm 121, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. Because my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. All you need is the name of the Lord. That's what the psalmist is saying. All you need is the name of God. The name of the Lord is my strong tower. That's all you need is the name of God. He is on your side. Why is it the only reason you need God? Because he is the only help you have. Oh, yeah, you may, you may think you have some other help. And sometimes we wait to call on him. But what I say to you all today is to call him first. Don't let him be an afterthought. Don't let him be after you've, you've used all your other, uh, other resources. Call him first because when he does it, he does it right. He does it to the uttermost and no one has to come after him and, and fix it and clean it up. But call him first because when you need help, there's no other name to call on but the name of the Lord. There's situations where you can, where you can not, you can't help yourself. And nobody else can help you. So I say start with God. People can support you, but they can't help you like the Lord can help you because he is on your side. As a matter of fact, he's everything that you need. He's all I need. He's everything you need. All the help, all of my help, all of my help, all of my help comes from the Lord. He is all the help you need. It's found in the name of the Lord. Jesus is all the help that you need. So when you call his name, he don't have to come running because he's already there. The Bible says he's omnipresent. It means he's everywhere you are. And if you need the Lord's help, 
Lift your head and just call his name. Lift your head. Call his name. Jesus. Because he is on your side. Father God, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for being our help. I thank you, Lord, for being our strength. Hi, oh, my God. I thank you, Lord, for protecting us. I thank you, Lord, for guiding us. And God, I thank you for all the many benefits, God, that we have because you are our help. And Lord, most of all, we don't have to fear, Lord God, because we have you, God, by our side. And because we don't have to fear, oh God, we have the confidence and the courage that we need, Lord God, to walk this life. And Lord God, if we just recognize that we are walking with you and you are walking with us. We recognize we have the victory in all things. So Lord God, continue to prosper us, oh God. Allow us, Lord God, to know your word that we may meditate on it day and night. Night and day, oh God, that the, as the Bible says, we will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Whose leaf does not wither, Lord God. And everything that we do, oh God, will prosper. Lord, that we'll prosper, Lord God, in our mental capacity, God. We'll prosper, Lord God, in our health. Lord, that our physical bodies will be well. We'll prosper, oh God, in our spiritual health, oh God. That, Lord God, we will be delivered, God, to the uttermost, as the word of the Lord says. The Lord God, we'll prosper financially, oh Lord God. And we thank you, oh Lord God. Yes, and even in our social well-being, oh God, that we will prosper. Thank you, Lord God, for opening the doors that need to be opened in our life, oh Lord God. That we will walk through those doors, Lord God, and receive the promotions and elevations that we need to, oh God. And Lord God, I speak right now to someone, oh God, that's looking, God, for employment, God. I know you have it for them. And I decree and I declare, Lord God, in the next few days that you will show them the place, oh Lord God, that you will have for them, Lord God, to work. And even for those, God, that are looking, God, for entrepreneurship opportunities, Lord, give us creative ideas, Lord God, witty inventions, oh God, business ideas and opportunities that we, Lord God, can be our own bosses, oh God, that, that we can create things, God, give solutions, God, to problems, oh God. That can bring resources into our hands. We might take care of our families in the name of Jesus, oh God. And Lord God, we pray that you will continue, God, to bless the people of God, even as they go throughout their days and go throughout these next hours, oh God, in this day. Okay, that you will help them, oh Lord God, to continue to be the mighty vessels you call them to be. Lord, allow them to be the great evangelists that you call them to be in the name of Jesus, oh God. And I pray, Lord God, for the Dent family. Pray, Lord God, you could uh, comfort them, God, for their time of bereavement. And then, Lord, continue to bless them, Lord God, and give them the peace that they need. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Pray right now, Lord God, for uh, Izzy and Ida, God, and the loss of their mom. That you bless them right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. Continue, Lord God, to comfort them and give them peace in their difficult time. And Lord, you know how to comfort us, oh God. And I thank you that you're going to do it so well in the name of Jesus, God. Pray for Sister Margie. That you continue, to God, to heal her in the name of Jesus, oh God. Heal her body, oh God. Remove the inflammation, Lord God. And do it now. Do it right now in the name of Jesus. So Mama Reveda, oh God. Continue to bless her in the name of Jesus, oh God. God, give her mental strength in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing in the lives of the people. That we thank you, God, for how you're giving us strength, God, in all areas of our life. That we can continue to do what you call for us to do in Jesus' name. Now, God, allow this word to be engrafted to the hearts of the people. That they will be changed. And they will become new and continue to know that you are on our side. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And bless the Lord. Amen, people of God. This is a great day to be a part of the kingdom of God. A great day to bless the Lord. A great day to bless someone else. I want to make sure I let you all know about the Women's Empowerment Summit that's coming up. I told you I was planning something great for you, for um, everyone that's on Tina Patton Ministry and watching this um, meditation. We are having this wonderful Women's Empowerment Summit. Um, happening on April 21st and 22nd on the campus of St. Mary's College. I think you all have a link. Um, I will put post a link up, but would love for you all to join that Empowerment Summit. Um, it's just $50 for a two, wonderful two-day summit. It's going to be a wonderful opportunity to rise. It's called a Women's Rise Summit. 
And we have our wonderful speakers, a, a phenomenal lineup of speakers. We're going to be talking about financial health. We're going to be talking about mental health. We're going to be talking about wellness. We have um, representatives from the YWCA. We're going to be talking about domestic violence and abuse. As a matter of fact, the uh, summit is actually for also for young girls 16 and up. We're going to have segments in regard to teen dating, violence, and abuse. We're going to have um, all sorts of um, um, segments in regard to college and uh, life after high school. We're just going to have all sorts of things that we know is going to bless you all. So click on the link, um, register for the event, and we'd love to see you on April 21st and 22nd. If you want any additional information, um, uh, be sure to inbox me or go to the website at www. Women Rise Michiana, womenrisemichiana.org. Love to see you there. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you next Monday. Bye-bye.